Hello and welcome to one more tutorial on using timer interrupts on the Arduino Uno. We'll again be seeing in detail the analog read function and the PWM functions. So this time we are actually going to fire our timers. The setup remains the same, an MB102 power supply adapter with a 9 volt power supply that's used to power a potentiometer. The potentiometer gives an input to the Arduino Uno's analog pins and this analog read value decides how bright an LED is going to shine and the brightness of the LED is decided by the PWM input to it. So here's our shopping list, the same from the previous video on the series and I'll be posting some links in the description box as to where you can get these from. So here are the connections labeled. I have the MB102, there is a 5 volt rail and this 5 volt rail is connected to a potentiometer. The central pin or the signal pin of the potentiometer is connected to A0, the analog input of the Arduino Uno. We use one digital PWM pin, the pin 6 in this case as the output and I have connected it to a LED and a current limiting resistor. The current limiting resistor is basically provided to make sure that the current in the LED remains in the milliamps range. If it goes higher than this, you run the risk of burning your LED. And just to refresh, this is our prescaler table from the Arduino Uno's AT328P datasheet. And as you can see from here, for a prescaler of 256, you need to set the CS12 bit for timer 1 as 1 and the other bits needs to be zero. So uh, as we know that the uh, timer one is a 16 bit timer. So the maximum value to which it can count is two to the power of 16 minus one or 65535. Let's suppose that we use a prescaler 256. Then with the Arduino clock frequency of 16 megahertz, it means that, you know, timer would overflow every one second. You can verify this calculation. So uh, 1 upon 16 megahertz into 256 into 65535 gives you 1. So here's our first variable, a variable called adjust which is set to A0 and integer called LED11. Then there's an integer called adjust val and an integer called PWM. Now here's a small trick that I'll tell you. The values that you intend to modify inside an interrupt loop, it's better to initialize them as volatile integers. So here's our setup. We set the serial mode to 9600. The uh, pin mode of LED that is, uh, this should be pin 6, sorry. TCNT1 is set to 0, so we are basically initializing the timer counter to 0, TCCR1B is set to 0 and the prescaler is set to 256 by keeping the CS12 bit as 1. We are using the OR equal to function to do this. Then the TCCR1A is set to 0 because there is no CTC mode involved. The timer mask is set to 0 but then the timer overflow enable bit is set to 1 and it's enabled and so is the SEI that is it's enabling all possible inputs. So let's just scroll up and review the entire code again. The integer adjust to capture A0 and uh, that's going to be used up in the void loop. So here's the void loop, it's much simplified. We, are, uh, we have a serial print, but please don't use it. Uh, it's just for diagnostics. Then we have this map, which maps the adjust val, that is the value that we are reading from the analog read from its uh, range of zero to one zero two three to 0 to 255, that's the uh, probable range in which the PWM pin can operate. So the map variable helps us to do this conveniently. And then we have the analog write, which writes the LED pin, that is pin 6, to the PWM value. Make sure that you have a pin which is capable of PWM. So now we move on to the uh, timer interrupt vector. We have used the overflow vector. And note that here we are reading the uh, volatile value adjust well which is basically the original value stored and analog read adjust is basically reading the uh, value in the a0 pin and if the previously stored value as adjust well 
and the analog read value have a difference of more than 50 we are using the absolute function to do this comparison then the value is going to get updated otherwise not so here's the initial value zero so they if the difference is over a certain threshold then we are going to update this value and analog read of adjust is going to be read to adjust when the volatile variable which is getting updated inside the timer loop and this volatile variable goes to the void loop in the map function and that enables us to set the PWM to the desired value. So uh, this code is very similar to the previous code again the uh, potentiometer getting varied is going to lead to the PWM uh, input to the LED varying and the LED flashing at a different rate but here we are periodically sampling the value of the analog read pen uh, and uh, that makes the code kind of more responsive. So instead of continuously monitoring the uh, analog read port, what we are doing is at every time the timer interrupt fires, we are going to jump over and check this. So now the Arduino Uno has been connected and we are ready to flash the code. We select COM4 and uh, we click the upload and save button to start flashing the code. So there we go. The code has been flashed successfully. Now I'll just show you my setup and the practical result is there for you to see. So here's our setup and I start to tweak my potentiometer, the brightness changes. You can see that very small changes in the potentiometer don't lead to any change because we have set a threshold value of 50. So now we have hit the maximum. So the advantage of the timer interrupt here is that the void loop is now free to do other things. It's not completely engaged by a delay. Thank you.